For those that don't know me, I'm Lynn and I'm the Chair of the Health and Housing Community Council. We're joined by the Vice Chair, Drea Middleton, the Treasurer, the lovely Pamela Gibson, and we've got Alana Muir, who is the founder of Save Lock Home in Britain tonight. We've also got Jimbo up in the corner there, and the chair in the corner up there as well. I'm sorry if I've not seen anybody else that I'm meant to be recognising, but um, I'm really impressed at the turnout yet again. Like the last meeting, we had a really good turnout. So to have so many people come out tonight to volunteer your time just shows again that we really get that groundswell and enthusiasm and passion to look at alternative solutions for Balloch versus Flamingo land coming in and dominating the west side of Balloch. So just one thing that we need to start off with before we kick off with the agenda is um, we've not got everyone who's here on our database. I already had a conversation or two where people are not comfortable with QR codes. So we've got a physical form here. So I'm just going to start and pass it, and you're, you're already on the form, aren't you? So we don't need to... Uh, don't are you? So <laughs> did, did you get an email off of me? I wouldn't know. Right. So if you suddenly had an email... Technology's passed me by. Okay. Okay. So we had a conversation with didn't if you haven't had an email and you haven't checked your junk folder, because there's a good chance it might get into your junk folder. But never, would... never. Junk no, folder. you're stuck with yeah, the junk folder. folder. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is ask those um, who, like yourself, are you sure, fill this form in. Oh, I don't know, I can't write. <laughs> so, you, you take that, you start. And what I'm going to ask you to do is pass it along. For those that aren't comfortable with the QR code, but everybody, if you haven't got a flyer, put your hand up and I'll come and give you a flyer just now if you're comfortable with a QR code, because the QR code is the easiest way of doing it. It basically gives you a link to an online forum that you then can complete online, and then that goes straight into the database. And that means then we can email you updates, we can let you know when things are happening. Equally, you can get in contact with us. Um, and so, so forth. The most important part of that database really is about the Scottish Land Fund and our application to that fund because we need as many people on that database as possible. Primarily we need 600 people from Balkan and Harden, but we don't want it just to be about the people from Balkan and Harden. We want it to be about the people from the whole of Western Bartonshire and surrounding regions like Stirlingshire and Argyllan Gute because they're impacted by this as well when you look at the likes of the A to 2 in the hospital is probably your two main um, culprits, or that's probably the wrong word, but your two main you know, reasons why people are objecting alongside a plethora of other reasons. So, does anybody need a leaflet? Anyone? Okay. And we've got loads of leaflets here, so the other thing that I would say Drea, the vice chair, is currently working on the maps. Um, there's two microphones, I'm just going to kick the other one off. 
um, and turn mines off. And I hope you don't mind introducing yourself. If you don't worry, tell us who you are. That's fine. Just pass the microphone. Oh, hello, you. Just jubilee. <laughs> So if you don't want to give an overview of who you are, that's fine, but it'd be quite nice to hear your name and where you're from. So again, I'm Lynn Somerville and I'm the Chair of Alton Harden Community Council. I'm just going to give Gia the mic to introduce herself. Hello everybody. I am, and hello, I'm Gia. Um, I've just recently joined the Alton Harden Community Council. Um, sorry, I'm running a bit like a headless chicken because I'm stuck. Funnily enough, on the E2. Oh, no. oh, I know, it's crazy, isn't it? So I literally, I got to Lust and it took me 45 minutes to get home. And I looked it up and I got home, it's nine miles. So, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. <laughs> as, as if I wasn't riled up enough about Flamingo Land today, just, ugh. I'm seething and I'm running my house, so I apologise. I know, so thank you so much. It's so nice to see everybody here um, as a result of yeah, all the hard work that everybody's put into it. So, um, yeah, it's lovely to see you all and, and hopefully like, meet you kind of individually as well as, uh, as the evening progresses. I'll hand over to Pamela. Hello, uh, Pamela Scott Gibson. Um, I joined the Ballad and Halloween Community Council back last June when we reformed because obviously it had been disbanded. And my main reason really for joining was to work on Flamingo Land. That was the reason that I joined, that I felt that it was going to be too big for such a small area. And I've been living here for 25 years. So i um, comfortable here and happy here and uh, didn't want to see that being destroyed. So hence, that's why I joined up the Belgian Hadley Community Council. I since, since I'm the treasurer and uh, we've had the lovely Drea join us. And we have a few more people that um, I see, um, Chris Agenson here as well. And uh, we have a couple of others that are not here this evening. They're the backroom boys. So we do a lot of good work, the backroom boys. They, they are the investigators. Mum's the work. <laughs> I hand you over to Alana. Hi, I think there's a few people in the room that actually know me. My name's Alana Mora, um, one of the co-founders of Save Love Women. Um, I think far enough back, it was around about 2017 we started the campaign. <coughs> Didn't think we'd be back here again. Um, I live in Argyne Butte and Gaelic Head, but as Jim will attest, I'm originally from here, from Bourne Hill. I grew up in Bourne Hill, went to school in Bourne Hill, went to the Vale Academy, learned to swim in Paddy's Pit, anyone who's in the was in Paddy's Pit, um, and spent my childhood either at the rowing club down at the Anglin Club and along the river, things like that. So for me, it's it's very pertinent that we're all here to save Loch Lomond. It's a very emotional thing for me because it's where I grew up, it's where I belong. I still I live in a gallery group, but I'm further over here because it's kind of where I am. So yeah, I'm really pleased to see so many people and let's hope we can do it this time. Uh, hi, my name is Jan Shields and uh, I wasn't, through no fault of my own, I wasn't born in this area. I'm actually a wee Glaswegian because my mum decided to have me in a private nursing home. I was so special. Anyway, um, I, ever since I've lived here all my life, apart from a little three years spent in the wild, Streets of London, which was marvellous. <laughs> uh, and then I came back up home and I've lived in Balloch ever since the good looking one behind me. Uh, and I got married. <laughs> so I've been here for quite a long time. <laughs> well, I think I'm 70 something. <laughs> I'm Mary McClunkey and I was born in Green Bay and still in Ballack and then across from the dog house upstairs, not in the dog house, <laughs> um, and I'll be 84 next month so Ooh. I've been in the Vale a long long time and I don't want this to happen, it would be really disappointing because we lived 
the B, without the B, that would think we did in the Vale Rock Valley. And these are going to be walked for Rock Road Road, so this would be a disaster. So, yeah. before they kick the bucket, I don't want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, my name's Elaine Telfer. I'm a Halton girl, born and bred. I actually live in the Vale now. Sorry, but a beautiful fountain. <laughs> and I, I certainly do not want to see this development um, at, at West Bank. Thank you. Hi, my name's Adrian McCauley. Hi, with all the help and girl now love in Great Moment, and you because I don't want to see the development. Hi, my name's Maggie Boyle. Um, I just more than anything don't want to see private developers getting their hands on that land which belongs to the community. Yeah. 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 Um, so I live in Inchcoon in Bally. Um, relatively new inmate, I've only been here 20 years, but um, again, like what Mary has said, um, there's no way I would like uh, the Loch Lomond spoiled. It's absolutely gorgeous, and everybody in the world knows about it. Yeah. Um, and I really don't want a fun fair at the back end. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, my name's Margaret Thwaites, and um, I should have talked to Ruby. I've lived on um, Clare Inch, oh, sorry, Inch Crew for um, 20 years, but I've been in Scotland for 30 years, so despite the accent, I'm, <laughs> most of my life has been up here, my married life anyway. Um, like everybody else, I don't want big developments in the area, that's totally on the size of scale. Did you pass that? Did you pass chose here because it's the bonniest, bonniest banks of Loch Lomond yeah. and I can't believe that that would be the case anymore. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. We've spoken spoke yeah. already, have we? Because we've had that conversation about you and what to volunteer and I think yeah. you're not alone. No. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Charlie McDevitt from the Bar. Thanks. Hello everybody, Elsa Caldwell from Bonhoeff. Jim Bowen, one of the local councillors for the Vale. That's the risk, that range, and I'll say it. You know me anyway. <laughs> I'm Jean Jack. I was born and brought up in Bullock Hill, and I live in Alexandria, and I don't want to see public land going to private ownership. Hello, I'm Jennifer Nicholson. I was brought up in Bala, and my ancestors going back were brought up in Bala. And I really do not want to see flamingo land locally. Uh, David O'Donnell, uh, Alexandria for 14 years. Uh, I just wanted to stay the way it is at the moment. Hi there, Paul and Beverly Baker. We've been uh, resident in Scotland for, in, well, since 77, in Ballock for the last 42 years. And we don't want to see anything changing. It's a national park, not a theme park. <laughs> I've said in Balloch and seen the Vale all my life, which is almost a long life so far. And all my family have stayed here for many, many generations. I've traced my family to back to the early 1700s. And they've been very transient to see it here. I wanted to stay as as uh, Chris Aitchison, uh, I stay in Balloch as well, originally from Clyde Bank, but I've been down here for 40, 40 years. Christine Aitchison, um, originally from Dumbarton, stayed in Balloch for 45 years. No. <laughs> <We're married. laughs> uh, and basically, don't want to see the development. I think it'll be over development, and also, um, to me, it flies in the face of preserving the environment and wildlife for the future generations, which they're learning at school. I think it completely defies all that. Um, originally, I uh, worked in the hospital. I trained in 1971. And I know the impact that a development like this would have on the services that we already have. So. Hi, Jackie Porter. Um, I live in a town quite by now, Mark. And I don't want any changes. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Nicholson. I've lived in Balak all my life. 
Hello, Therese Berman. I've lived, a long English. I've lived here for a good number of years and I opted to stay as a friend. Hi, Noreen McAvoy. I've spent the greater part of my life in Bala. I want the area to stay as it is. National Parks are supposed to protect the area and not allow developments that to happen. Jane McAvoy, my sister, and my, my sons. It seems absolutely totally wrong that a beautiful area should be basically destroyed forever by a commercial venture. I'm English, so I don't John and Christine Coles, we downsized from Glasgow six years ago and moved to Balloch because we brought our children here when they were young, loved the area, didn't want it to change and still don't want it to change. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm another Englishman, uh, originally from the northeast of England, moved up to Balloch when I was 17 and just never left, fell in love with the place and I'm still here. Hi, I'm Leslie here. I've lived here for 40 years and I don't want to see the development, um, so I've decided to get off my backside and do something. <laughs> Hi, David Ross. I've lived here most of my adult life and certainly don't want to see public land and private ownership. Meg Graham, living in Craig Lomond, but I've been to Barton Elms for a second year in the last couple of years. Married into the area, I've been associated with it since 1965. So don't want to see this either. Hi, Shania, uh, um, um, local ish. I grew up in uh, Bonhill and I now live in Mark Mason. I just believe we're custodians of a, a land for generations and uh, we do our very best to make it stay within. Out private ownership for generations to come. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Andrew Marley. I've been here for 25 years. Hello, my name is Susie Will. I come from Kilcreggan. Um, I come over to Balloch a lot. Uh, and I cannot believe that anyone thinks that putting something like Flamingo Land on that piece of beautiful countryside mm -hmm. could ever happen. It's appalling. Yeah. <coughs> uh, my name is Mike Reese, also known as Di, to <coughs> close friends and family. I came here in 1969 and as I arrived to, I was billeted by the Navy in the Lockdown Hotel as it was in the day. As I approached the Cross Keys roundabout, I looked to the right and you can see Loch Lomond. And I haven't, uh, it's been pulling me back ever since. Mm -hmm. And it must not change. Yeah. Just so that Scottish Enterprise can tick a box, justify their existence. And this is my lovely wife, who's yeah. suddenly gone silent. I'm Andy Sennett. I've been in um, Baturk just up outside Barlag for over 30 years. Uh, I also originally um, from uh, Lancashire. And I just think the community has a better idea of what to do with these places that they've used for years, rather than giving it to a commercial development. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Doreen Burkett, born and bred in Halton, but I stay in Rosette. I've worked, no, not worked, I've played, exercised the dogs, swam <laughs> since 1973 in Loch Lomond, and it was devastating when... I was devastated when up the bay changed. Mm -hmm. when, when, when women's shows went in and Paddy's pit disappeared, so I don't want to see it changing anymore. Yeah, no. we all said, and we've got the camera lady actually, that we're going to let see a word or two, so if you want to just give it a camera, <laughs> and then we'll let you say something, so here you go. Hi, I'm Lucy Hayes, I'm from Lancaster, I've lived here for 30 years, and I've lived here since 1979. I'm a keen runner, I love nature, I'm always up the hills, I just love the area, I just think it's a travesty if it is uh, yeah, sold off to some private developer. Yep, yep, well said, thanks, can I give you that back then? Okay. So have we missed anybody? You've not said hello, do you want to say hello, do you want to? Hello, hi, I'm Sarah Hayes, I'm a 
Is that Gail um, and I'm the chairperson for Save All Home and uh, Action Group? Um, I'm sure some of you remember us for the last time. Um, just wish you all luck with this venture and, and interested to see how it's going to go forward. Thanks. Thank you. Come on, and we like to talk. <laughs> Hi, how do you do? I'm Dan from Dumbarton, and I'm here to help save all Poland. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you like to say hello? Oh, it's all right. Would you like to say hello, uh, hello to the camera about who you are? You don't have to. Yeah. Hi, I'm Christina. We've moved to the area about four years ago, and um, I can you uh, use me 82, me 85. And it's the traffic's already horrendous, so yeah. I can't imagine what it would be like um, with this new road. An extra car every 15 seconds, I think, during rush hour, isn't it? So yeah, it's bad enough as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll find you a seat. There's some seats down here. Can you maybe go to the room? Do you want to say hello? Hello? Hi, I'm Peter. There's no way to see there. It's moved into the area. But we'll be coming here for. Six years um, to the Bonnie Banks, and we just want to make sure that it's, it's kept the way it is. Thanks. Thank you so much. Come on in. You want to say a hello? You come in at the right. Hi there, my name is Martin Bell. I've lived here since uh, 1978. Uh, I just live in Fishing Road, and uh, I'm totally opposed to what they're wanting to do. Um, Thank you very much. There's sheets across there if you want to grab something for one. Okay, so just we're here to speak about the community development trust tonight. We're really not here to speak about anything other than that, but I think it's important that we offer updates. Um, so back in Halden Community Council are obviously leading on the application to apply for an asset transfer to be um, conducted under the 2015 Community Empowerment Act. Um, just to prelude that though, we're obviously speaking with LLT and about why we don't want it, and as a community we are acting as a, as a statutory body rather, we are acting as a community voice. But not just on behalf of Balloton Hall, on behalf of the rest of Britain, Western Berkshire, and in fact, those 130,000 objectors that are on the green site as well, I would say. It's been, yeah, yeah. It's changed, it's gone back down. Back down. So there's been a bit of an anomaly with the numbers, so we don't know why we need to speak to Chris Gordon about that. But um, so Balvin Health and Community Council are, are constantly, and Pamela um, had mentioned the, the back office boys, Kenny and Jeff are really pivotal and, and, and kind of finding that key detail and whatnot. So there's a couple of things that we've done in addition to that 34 page objection that we submitted on the 24th of June, I think it was, or roughly about that date, but we've submitted another objection um, and it's with respect to um, the, the, the background to manage woodland in Old Lush Road area. So that's available on the Ballot and Halden Community Council Facebook page for you all to view. Um, what I will do in follow up, or we will do rather, is we'll send an email out with these attached so you can have a little read of them. I know that some people have difficulty or you're not on Facebook or you maybe have difficulty reading it from Facebook. So we'll attach those to that and you can have a little read of that objection um, because it, it seems to have included details in the plan that it means that. It doesn't belong there, and it means that in addition to the two hotels, hundred lodges, the monorail, the water park, and the staff quarters and the brewery and everything else that they've got proposed, that they could actually come back and add more onto that mm -hmm. at a later date. Yeah. So we've highlighted that to them in that objection. There's also a, an FRA, which is sorry, a, a um, flood. There was a flood risk assessment. <laughs> so they keep LLTNP we've continuously asked for a flood risk assessment to be conducted. Um, with bank house area, I um, mean they keep refusing and it's up to them to ask SIPA to do that. And SIPA we've went to and SIPA have told us that they cannot conduct it unless LLTNP specifically requests it. <coughs> so we have and we're running with that as well and we're, we're hoping to, to try and 
I'm sure that the, the carrier of that FRA, because there is a, a real flood risk, and we've given them evidence to demonstrate that. The other thing that we've done is we've submitted a freedom of information request um, to Scottish Enterprise in the last week or so, and um, that freedom of information request is really looking at the due diligence and adherence to the governance process in respect to the planning policy, um, NPF4, and, and how they should be managing any application, but specifically this application itself. So we've yet to get a, um, a response to, to that as well, so we'll keep you posted. And again, that's just a little bit of a general update. On Sorry, can I ask if you had an acknowledgement of it? Yes, we have an acknowledgement of all of those things. Right, and have they given a the time frame of when they're going to Typically, reply? Typically, they need to do it in like 21 days. I used to work for Scottish Enterprise. Don't do me. <laughs> <laughs> was it, was it, it, it wasn't Scottish Enterprise in Barkinshire, it was Scottish Enterprise Glasgow. Yes. <laughs> it's from Barkinshire, it's not done. Yeah, so um, we've had acknowledgements of that and um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to keep on top of that and we've actually got some follow-ups to do. Yeah, just, just as, a, as a matter of interest, you need to check if you put in any objections that has actually been put onto the portal. Yeah. Because not every objection actually hits the portal and you think because you've sent in the objection that it's there. So is that just the the green park to one or the no, national no, park? No, the national park. So, so that's, where, that's just, where the actual objections and right. anything, any technical ob objections that you've made, check that it's on the portal because we found that you could send an objection and it might not hit. But what happened to the ones that were put in the green park to portal thing? It's numbers of fl fluctuated, you were saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah I am. Um, the reason, I, do you know? I don't Delta know. I literally looked at it last night and it was, you're right, it was up to 160. Yes. So 163. 163, yeah. and I went into it last night. I think it was to do with the, the, with the length of time that they've had things run. Some people went in twice and signed, so ah, what they've done is cleaned it up it. so that the oh, National oh, Park can't come back and see okay, it. Yeah. And yeah. they're just yeah. tightened up, it's just that yeah. they did yeah. it. Oh, we lost 20,000, so 20,000 do you sign twice? Right, okay, <laughs> so that was that. So well, yeah, yeah, exactly so. But it's still open and it's still running, but obviously they're, they're just getting rid of duplicates and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... We obviously have asked everyone to come tonight to volunteer um, the time in some way, shape or form. So there's several things that we need to help us to progress this local and south community development trust to that stage one and then that stage two application. So we need to raise awareness, we need to get that 10% at a very bare minimum of the Balkan housing community. Um, that is a bare minimum. The Scottish Land Fund would like to see more than 10%. Um, but if we can get that 10%, that would be a great place for us to start. So, and one of the ways and the only ways that we can do that is through leafleting and doing like a tabletop mm -hmm. type setups and whatnot and chapping doors and asking people. And I'm sure that you're going to, those that volunteer, um, as I will, we're going to be met with some people who just are not interested, mm -hmm. some people who are really eager to speak with you, and then some people who are probably maybe just going to be maybe quite aggressive about the whole thing and say they're for it. Mm -hmm. But I think those are going to be in their minority because when we've done, I mean, there is. I was just going to say that I think a, a, a flyer, a, a lost count of the amount of flyers, but a flyer a lot in the recent um, flyers that went out. And I think the, and there was the vast majority of people that I either met at the door coming in or out or in the street were in favour. And I think I came across two people that opened the door and were a bit like, <laughs> and I just smiled at them and hi there and carried on. And they did. They were a bit like, oh, okay, I'm not even going to challenge. So yeah, the vast majority of people I think probably will be singing from the same hymn sheet as ourselves. Um, but I think it's really important that if we do, whoever is going to get involved, I think it's really important that if anybody is against it, we just, you're welcome to your opinion and we'll yeah, move yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to get developed yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so just on, on that point, obviously, kind of brings us nicely on. So um, I think what we're going to do probably kind of later, or just you know, next to the meeting as well, maybe break into groups. So have a think essentially. So as Lynn said, the, the, the importance of this is we need that number from Balak and Halden mm -hmm. needs to be that, that mm -hmm. year. How many years? Yeah. Just now. <laughs> But probably this is where people have been filling that form and that you're filling in manually just now. A lot of people have ticked that they're in Ballard and Halden, but they're maybe living in Papert or they're down the Vale. So there's a bit of a data cleanse operation, mm -hmm. just like Gail was saying there. That's what the Greens have done with their database. They went through and cleansed it. We need to do that as well. And we've done some of it, but there's only so many hours in a day and we work mm -hmm. full time. So, and there's an awful lot of other competing priorities. So yeah, we'll get, yeah we, we, are, we are getting through it, but it's, it's taking time. So it's on the list. It is on the list. <laughs> we are doing it. We are doing it. But, but I think roughly in the region, it's maybe about 180, 190 that I would say definitely. So we, we still we have got a bit of work to do. We still got yeah, we still got quite a lot of work to do essentially. But I think the, the main thing that really does need to be concentrated on is if we can do that door to door canvassing, mm -hmm. um, because it's the only way. I mean, it's fine putting flyers through the door, and I think in all of the other areas, you know, it, it's it's great to have people on board, and you know, it's not we're not trying to exclu exclude anybody from other areas. It's just that in order to get that asset transfer, we need them from Balak and Could Hamilton. that not be changed? Because everybody is very passionate about Loch Lomond. Yeah. It's a huge national thing. Mm -hmm. well, it well, shouldn't really just be down to you guys to have to push this through. But, okay, so we're going to get to that in a wee second because we're going to speak about the legal formation and the legal formation will allow mm -hmm. other regions to come in. Okay. But in order for us to apply to the Scottish Land Fund, we yeah. need to tick that box. In fact, they would like to see more than 10%. Mm -hmm. They would actually like to see 15 to 20 percent but if we can get to that 10 percent figure so how big an area can you get your we've got about six thousand three hundred or somewhere in that region i can't remember the exact number but we're sure we need like 600 people uh -huh. at the minimum to sign up from balak and halden okay so once you get that you've ticked that box we've ticked that box yeah. <clears throat> and we would like to add to and that and then everybody else can <clears throat> come in well you okay. can still come in anyway because i mean what um we're going to discuss as part of the um, Sorry. as part of the discussion tonight. We're all going to take a vote mm -hmm. on the legal formation. So there's three different legal formations that we can choose from, and that's down to us as a group to decide. It's not up to any one person. So we're I'm going to talk you through. I've had meetings with government bodies that um, are funded rather. They're not um, like SE. As an example of charitable staff as bodies that um, are there specifically to look at community asset transfers, community to like buy, and they've talked me through the three options. But they were at the last meeting, so if you were to go back and watch the last meeting, which is on our YouTube channel, that will tell you um, more detail, and it gives you the. It's actually quite a good insight into the benefits and how communities have rallied together and that groundswell and how that um, has really made an impact and there's been some really lovely projects mm -hmm. like the Nordic mm -hmm. one is a great example and again we'll go through that in a, a little moment or two but um, that's going to be down to everyone in this room it's not just down to the people from Balak and Halden and I think that's important to say because it is as a few people have said it's a national park and the former CEO of LLTNP stated such, didn't she, Alana? The National yeah. Park is for everyone. Um, I mean, it's those in Baton Hall that are going to be impacted directly, mm -hmm. mostly, but also those in the surrounding areas, of course. Um, but again, we want it to be an open <coughs> um, community development trust where everyone's involved and everyone's got a say. Um, I think that's really important. So um, I'm going to just hand back to India because we really need to get the, the flyer thing <coughs> kind of nailed down. And, 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 so yeah, up again yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, it's um, it's a very, very technical thing called a little map. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, I like your style. I know, but <laughs> so essentially, uh, Pamela's lovely husband Kenny, the back, the back room boys was printing these off till when, whenever seven o'clock in the morning and I was sitting screenshotting them last night mm -hmm. um, till whenever I was and essentially anybody who has the ability and wants to and is enthused to 
uh, do the kind of door to door canvassing and the flying mm -hmm. and we'll just all get together tonight and we can look at, I've got all different areas, some from the Barton, Halden, Dale, Tully, I've covered, we've tried to cover all, all bases essentially, but again, I think the initial concentration needs to be developed in Halden so we can try and get as many of that figure as we can. Um, so again, I think we're, we're probably going to split into groups a wee bit later mm -hmm. and then we'll have a look at, you know, who's in the kind of flyer and leaflet and canvassing group and then we can, if you, everybody just lets me know where they can cover and we'll look at distributing maps to you mm -hmm. and I'll look at coordinating that. Can I ask a question? Uh -huh. how, do you know how the people with the businesses in Balloch feel about mm -hmm. So we've, we've done a business survey, um, 83% of the businesses are against it because they're fearful, and that's most of hospitality and leisure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Organisations are fearful for the survival of their business mm -hmm. because of the impact that the footfall, so either the, um, the Flamingo Land Development would absorb that footfall or it would drive it away equally. That absorption is, um, if you look at Wood Leisure as an example, they do not um, they add to the economy, they bring to the local economy because they don't have an on so, uh, site shop, they don't have a restaurant, they don't have a bar, whereas this development has a, a restaurant, it's a spa, it's got yeah. like bar, bars, it's a brewery, it's it's like, yeah. so it does that whole thing where it's going to take away from the local businesses, so it's not going to be a value add. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Well, no, um, so. Lynn, can I ask a question about the local businesses? I'm assuming then that they have all raised their objections then through that portal. Do you know that? Yeah, or, yeah. some of them have that I know of. I'm not um, aware of all of them having done so. Um, so I, I definitely know that several have, and they've written to Scottish ministers as well, and they've been copying us on those emails as well. So, um, yeah, they are very active, the ones that we're speaking with. Um, some are quite fearful to put their head above the parapet, and I, I get that because I think if where they're fearful to put their head above the parapet, they think if the development goes ahead, they're going to be at a disadvantage mm -hmm. in some way, which is a real shame. But anyways, I mean, the ones that we have been able to canvas and speak with again, they are fearful. <coughs> some have even said that they think that we need to shut their business down, mm -hmm. which is a terrible thing to mm -hmm. to have to worry about. Um, if that is your main source of income and your bread and butter, and then mm -hmm. if this comes along, you are going to need to shut up shop. I mean, the largest revenue return, sorry, I think that's something a bit weird. The, look at SMEs, your small to medium enterprises and micro businesses are your largest revenue return for any economy, wherever you are in the world. Not your larger corporations, not your Aldi's, not your Asda's, not your Domingo Lands. We need micro and SMEs are the, again, the, the best thing for local economies and um, they help local economies flourish for lots of good reasons. So, um, I mean, this is why the Law Women South Community Development Trust is a great idea because it will underpin that very basis of um, driving that economic growth through micros and SMEs. There would be spin outs out of the Law Women South Development Community Development Trust. If we can get that to us information building and rest of our side. And I know that there's con there's controversy over that because not a lot of people want to develop and we don't want to tear down trees and we don't want to change anything or impact on that the animals that habitat the area at all. But we need to, and this is an adherence to the Scottish Land Fund piece as well, we need to be seen to be creating some form of development. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid we've got no option other than that. So we need to look at what's missing from the area. So we don't have a community council. Oh, sorry, a community. Incentive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a bit of a fun. You hear those for a long week. Very long. I'm fired. I'm fired myself. So um, we've not got a community centre. I mean, we're in a hall tonight that we've had to hire that's um, linked to. A local church, so um, we've not got a community centre for any demographic team in. Park, <laughs> in the National Park building, yeah, um, that's just spent over a million. Is, is the juxtaposition, is, the irony is not lost on any of us when you get the library along the road that's just been shut mm -hmm. and moved into the local primary school that's actually lacking in ASN places, and you've now got young families that are having to homeschool. 
their children that have got special and additional needs. Um, it's shocking, but nonetheless, that's not what we're here to speak about tonight. Certainly, the, the, the whole idea about the, the Lachlan and South Community Development Trust is that we come together and we, we create sustainable solu solutions to, to, to create community empowerment and wealth building opportunities for the local community that will be for the betterment of not just the community, but for the, the economy itself. Offering real opportunities for people to flourish, not to enter into low paid entry level jobs that offer no real opportunity for career progression and that is the only thing that this development will bring to this area. That is my, that's my, and that's what I work in for the last five years. I have worked in higher education, um, private before that, and higher education, specifically on the skills agenda. So, low-paid entry-level jobs with very little skills attached to that is not what we need for this area. It will just perpetuate the poverty cycle that so many families are stuck in and they have been for generations and I speak from experience. I'm the first from my mum, my mum's family, family side to go to university. Um, generational poverty in this region and district is a real issue. Um, so yes, I'm fiercely for creating opportunities for people to, to create better lives for themselves and for their families. So I don't know, I think a bit off topic. <laughs> I think that's why you're asking that question. <laughs> 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 so, um, so back to the maps in the area. We're going to do that breakout later. Do you want to say anything else on that? I don't really think so. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's maps. Okay. <laughs> it's not rocket science. I so. it's rocket science. Yes. <laughs> I think it's probably better that when we break out, we'll ju I'll just take, just go over it. We're, we're going to yeah. do the map thing. We're going to do the table thing yeah. and whatnot, yeah. and, and, and we'll sign people up that way. So the, the fundraising side of things. Um, We've set up a GoFundMe page, which is hugely important because the Scottish Land Fund, so there's a couple of reasons why it's important. The Scottish Land Fund, there's a stage one and stage two of the application process. Stage one will help us look at the valuation and survey costs for the tourist information building and West River side. Mm. Now, we might not be able to access that stage one application um, money because of the exclusivity agreement. Now, I was only told, or we were told this, on Friday last week by DTAS, which is your Development Trust Association for Scotland. Now, their solicitor had taken a look at the exclusivity agreement and look, and she knows, as an organisation, organization, that's what they do day in and day out, um, they know about asset transfers and everything that's involved in the, the kind of monetary funding application side of things. And she says, there's, it's quite likely, it might be, it's not a definite, however, that um, Highlands and Islands Enterprise and the National Lottery who manage the Scottish Land Fund might refuse your stage one application because of the exclusivity agreement. So the GoFundMe page is massively important to allow us to get the money that we need to cover the costs for that survey and valuation because without that we don't know what we're dealing with and that feeds into the business planning process which is stage two and that's Going on from what we have said about meeting volunteers to that, to do that flying and um, speaking to people on the street and whatnot, we need volunteers that are going to be able to help with that business planning process. So anyone in the room that's maybe had their own business, they've been involved in a corporate, they have a corporate background in any way, shape or form, we need you in that steering group and that business plan steering group can help us um, draft. And what we would do is draft a, a first copy of a business plan and then all of us would get back together again and you'd all have a copy to read beforehand and we would all discuss it. Um, I mean, there's some, we could float some ideas tonight. We've had some really good ideas, like Bruce up in the corner there has a fantastic idea of an amphitheater behind the Tourist Information Centre, mm -hmm. which I think it would bring the same kind of footfall as the Highland Games would. It wouldn't impede too much on West Riverside, yeah. and it would allow us to have a community um, hub of sorts where we could all meet and have um, theatrical productions, musical productions and whatnot. It would complement the, the folk festival. So that's just one idea. There's another idea actually. I'm going to pass it on to Alana on this because it's quite a nice idea. I think it's important that you mention what you know. I'm sure there's lots of people in the room who are well aware 
of the Law Wolverine Amateur Wing Club, founded in 1872. Now, they really need a better facility. So I've been in talks with two of the ex-members of the Rowing Club. You'll probably know them, Peter Haney mm -hmm. and Jim McNiven, okay. um, both Olympians. Strangely, we produced quite a few Olympians from this area in rowing. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a kind of chat about what would be the options of looking at some sort of Scottish national water sports centre mm -hmm. uh, which would cover things like paddle boarding, rowing, canoeing, everything that doesn't really involve an outboard motor. Um, so in keeping with the environment theme but at the same time opening up a water sports centre that could be used by tourists but also would have at least a 50% usage for the local schools and for local community groups so that all our children as they come through from school are learning water safety and getting a chance to do water sports because as we we'll all know um, most of the um, outdoor activity centres are out with the reach of the school area now and we don't really have anything in our area so what is the point in sitting on a huge lake and not having a water sports centre it just seems madness so we're in sort of really early talks with uh, Jim and Peter to have a look at this yeah. <laughs> There's some other really good ideas, so the, the Climate Action Hub, having to this information building is a Climate Action Hub, so um, we're speaking to another community development trust in Shaden, and they have a revenue generating model that is a Climate Action Hub, where they've been out and actually helping people with the um, insulation of their homes. Now we've all, maybe not all of us, but some of us I'm sure have heard of the cowboys that are going around and mm -hmm. doing this, these insulations in homes mm -hmm. and not doing it properly. Um, so that's one revenue generating idea that we would actually have the blueprint off straight off the bat. Um, forestry schools, you mentioned, I think, did you say that there? Um, uh, there, is a, there is a group in Glasgow um, that run forestry schools at the moment um, through Glasgow City. It's a mixture of forestry school and theatre type schools and they take children from age three up. Um, they're interested. Um, the other, say, block low wind founder member is not here tonight, Sam, but Sam would be able to tell you that we had um, long conversations with the Cranock Centre at Loch Tay mm -hmm. because there had been a Cranock on Loch Lomond mm -hmm. as part of its history, yeah. so that was considered to be another option. We would also like to go back to the drawing board, I don't know how many of you have heard of Gal Gale, so Gal Gale, Gal Gale and Govan, um, mm -hmm. the traditional boat builders, um, they're on an industrial estate in Govan at the moment, so clearly some access to a waterfront location would be ideal for them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going back over seven years um, when this plan was kind of first touted. Um, so their plan and thoughts have been that they would bring that traditional boat building yard to Loch Lomond and with it would, would come apprenticeships with it in the boat building, blacksmiths, that sort of thing. So that had been one of the other ones that was tipped. So there are tourists. And tourists, yes. So there were um, quite a few interesting, I guess the best way to describe them was social enterprises who had sort of thrown their hat in the ring. And I'm almost convinced if, if we can succeed and get access to this land, overturn the exclusivity agreement, then there's absolutely no reason why this community and the supporting enterprises can't bring some sort of what I would best term as Scotland's premier eco tourist destination, mm -hmm. and why that cannot be Balloch and Loch Lomond. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. what we're looking for. So, the, the, again, going back to the GoFundMe, um, it's super important. So, on the leaflets that you all have, um, we put these on the Facebook page and whatnot and we've shared them and it's super important that you share them with your friends and your family. A couple of pounds towards that go fund me will go a long way. Um, Excuse me, have you, have you got a target for the agreement for? We will be, the target, initial target is 10,000. Um, there's other ways that we can look at raising cash and we we'll look at the legal formation but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I mean, we've got an event that we're hosting in the Doghouse on the 31st, Saturday the 31st of August, so Aussie has kindly given us 
the owner is Ozzy. He's kindly given us the, the premises for free and he's going to be putting on, well, the order or the agenda of the day is it will kick off at 3pm and we'll be running a raffle. So we've already got some really good raffle prizes. We've got some top notch hotels. We've got vouchers for how many stays already? Four? Five. 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 So you've got another one? Yeah. <laughs> class, okay. so we've got five hotel vouchers. We've got whiskies. We've um, got restaurant vouchers. And that's one of the things we would want to ask everyone here tonight. Have a little think. Do you know someone that's got a business? Maybe you have your own business. Is there something you could maybe donate? To that raffle because that will help again. Would give them a <laughs> that would help them uh, obviously add additional funds to the, the money that we need to raise. Um, so that event will run from three until five, and then I just going to put on free food for us all. And then we'll get bands um, from around about five thirty six until about ten, and then there's going to be a DJ or two on. So um, it will be a ticketed event. So please do come along. I think it'll be really good. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know the name of it because I'm new here. But um, the the big boat that leaves from Balloch. Sweet. 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 Yeah. How invested are they in the development? Are they for or against? We've, we've not really spoken to Sweeney's about this. I think. I mean, in terms of Sweeney's involvement. Yeah. yeah I, I think I'm probably going to see no comment on that at the moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, the event is ticketed and we're going to do the poster, so we're just confirming the act. So we've got a um, band or two confirmed, we've got a DJ confirmed, and we've got to just maybe get a poet that's going to come along. So we're just wanting to confirm them up before we do the posters and we'll get them out hopefully next week. Um, so we'll be able to get tickets probably at the doghouse with the one location. Um, we might have another location or two, but certainly the doghouse is where you could go and I would suspect you'd be able to pay at the door because what will happen is you'll have people that will only come for a couple of hours and leave because it is such a long day mm -hmm. and then as long as we're not at capacity, people will be able to pay to get in so, and then that will obviously be good because we'll be generating that extra mm -hmm. door entry fee. Would that only be in four weeks away? Is it not worth putting out something about safety date? more information to follow. Yeah, we will. I think, I mean, again, it's uh, competing priorities. The priority has been concentrating on tonight's meeting and getting everything ready for tonight's meeting. And again, we're working full time, so there's only so many hours in the day. We're really all relying. All volunteers now? We have got all of you guys. <laughs> so um, you've all got those that have got social media presence. Um, I mean, it's really important that we are collaborating and sharing yeah. and supporting one another yeah. and where that's not happening it's 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 because to a certain degree there's 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 been um and we'll, we'll get into this in a little bit more detail as i get through the agenda but we need to be supportive of one another um so balkan housing community council is a statutory body we've got a code of conduct and it's important that um we adhere to that code of conduct and and, and all um, work together collaborative, collaboratively and respect one another as individuals um, whilst we're trying to achieve a common goal and that's ultimately what we're trying to do here so we can't lose sight of that. Um, so the stage, just on to the next piece of the agenda, the stage one of the Scottish Land Fund, I've already mentioned that we are Gathering quotes, so we've spoke to likes of DM Hall, Savills, um, Hardy's, and a few others in terms of those quotes that we need for the Tourist Information Building um, Valuation and Condition Survey. That's stage one, so we'll submit that to um, the, the Scottish Land Fund, which is Highlands and Islands Enterprise and National Lottery with those folks attached, asking for that money to be paid for, for those surveys and condition, evaluation and condition survey to be carried out. Um, at that point then, we then need to look at the, the business planning process. If it's approved, again, it might not be approved, so that whole GoFundMe page piece and that doghouse event is super important that we try and raise as much money as we possibly can so that we have that as a backup. Um, 
the legal formation is where we're going to start talking about the three different legal statuses. So um, I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. And Jim, I'm going to actually give you a microphone up because you have experience. You have experience of running right. a development trust. Or is it a development trust you're calling? So I'm just going to, what I'll do, I'll run through the three, because I've got a matrix app, so I'm going to hand out the matrix app. So we've got copies, and I think we've got enough copies for everyone. So just put in a second. Are you sure? Okay, well, thanks. Before you can Thank you. 
and it was actually formed long before you could become a skill. So we're actually the one in the middle. We're a company limited to guarantee. Uh, and it's we've got nine trustees on, on the board of volunteers. Don't get paid quite rightly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the one at the top is actually the one I would, I would favour is the, the, the skill. Because if the skill had been in when we set our trust up, we would have went with that model. But it wasn't available. I don't know enough at all about the bottom one, the benefits of that. But the, the, the one that we're in, a company limited guarantee where you, you're responsible to Oscar for your accounts mm -hmm. and you've got to register as a company, a limited to guarantee uh, for £50. Uh, any, any trustee, if there's any financial problems, any trustee is only held to account for a pound. So it doesn't mean if there, if there was something happened and the trust was in debt of £10,000. The most a trustee can be held to account for is a pound individually. Uh, that's, that's really what I would like to say. I mean, I, I think the model we've got in Renton, like these local people total control, total control over the, over the board, total control over who can apply to come on the board and uh, they've got a name and apps and I think I've passed them on to I think they gave the Lynn a copy the trust name and apps that's your Bible, that's how you've got to operate and it's how you ask her to evaluate what we're doing uh, so that's about it I think if there's any questions people have got I'll, I'll try and specifically answer them you know does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> if you vote for one of these, uh, is it possible to uh, do that initially and then maybe change it to a different system later? Yes, you can do that. You, you, you can do that. I mean, you can pick any of these three and then yeah. if it doesn't suit you, you can then develop it and you want the other ones. It's a process to get through and you need to get Oscar to approve that. One of the suggestions has been that um, that we for to expedite because obviously we don't have a lot of time on our hands is and this would all, all, also lead to that being able to diversify um, where our revenue generation is coming from because again we need to be generating some form of revenue to make it a viable um, situation because if we've got a building to manage we need to be able to manage the building we need to be able to keep the land and it's a current a good state, it's not a good state mm -hmm. currently actually, we know why that is because mm -hmm. LLT and MP are not paying our loan insurers the extra for the one man extra it would take to keep that in good order anyways I digress so um, it's been suggested by DTABs that we limit, go for a company limited by guarantee anyway um, and then either go for the Ben call and the skill, and that would allow us, and I think Drew, if he was here tonight, would probably agree with that, Jim, don't you think? He, it's all about the whole kind of having sister organisations to allow us to be able to build, and then it means we can support, these organisations can support one another. Well, that's, that's how I used to be able to make, you know, and the, uh, you know, one of the other things, one of the difficulties I find with the one at the bottom is, it gets very dirty and murky when you start handing out shares, yeah. you know, it really does, the money's involved. Uh, so I think that's something to think about in the future. The, one, the, the main way we raise income is the only asset Red Community Development Trust has got is the John Conley Centre, which is an old community centre in the village in Renton. And we rent space out to various groups and that gives us an income to maintain the building as best we can. So that, that, that's the kind of model we work on. We do try and apply for grants for the lottery and that, but it's becoming an impossible yes, to get money for the lottery. And, and this is where the Bencom is more advantageous because you've got that, well this is again, I'm not an expert on it, but you've got that capacity and capability to, to actually 
create a brand. Um, and we not all know that Loch Lomond is globally recognised, so it would give us the capacity to be able to create that brand and um, exploit it without being nasty about it or being like Flamingo Land or being about it. And to our benefit, so sorry, two wee seconds, because Gail had to had to hand up first. A couple of people had asked on the other group feeds about questions about the CBT the last time and I had noted them and one of them was kind of to do with that. They were saying that if we went ahead with this under any of these different plans, is there any of these plans that would allow the land once we bought it, if we do it and we get it all, is there any development running with the CTD that could be transferred or sold after we have it or would that be tied? No, it would be tied to the community. Yeah, that, right? yeah no, that's, I mean, that's the whole reason why we're doing this, mm -hmm. to stop any future development and to make sure that we've got it in community ownership and that you came within community ownership and I mean, we would have a, have a very tight act of association and constitution could have planned that to back all of that, absolutely, there wouldn't be any infiltration. And like down the road, would it just be the same, all volunteers, nobody getting paid kind of thing? It would all be volunteers, it wouldn't be, I mean, this is where you're dealing with it. How the people had on uh, the, on the track? Like, your, like your kicks, that's where you've got people that are getting paid and whatnot, and yeah. that's a whole different scenario, we're yeah. not looking at that cool. at all. Um, but sorry, one of the other positive things about using that model uh, is that you still a charity, but you can set up trading companies yeah. at arm's length. Yeah. And that's what happened in Renton. They set up a care company, yeah. Command Care, that now employs about 35 people. In fact, I think it's the biggest employer in the village. Which is a brilliant story. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's, yeah. that's still, the, I mean, the trust. The trust get the golden vote on it because they, they appoint the two directors and any surplus that's made to the trading company goes back into the community development trust. They try and develop other aspects of what they're doing. So that model would allow you to. So that's yeah. a brilliant example. I mean, there's, there's lack of services as we know in the area across multiple disciplines, isn't there? So there's, there's real scope for us to. And the business planning process to sit down and say like where are we lacking what gaps can we fill and how can we make that revenue generating and how can and what employment then would that offer and what training opportunities would that then bring to the local community i think one of the other things the interesting things is uh, it doesn't necessarily be that you would start a company and float that company off and it would be on that land yeah, yeah. Keep somewhere else exactly. It could be somewhere else, yeah. so you could protect as much of the land as you wanted, yeah. uh, but still set up arm's length trading companies to, to trade and raise revenue. You know? Yeah, I think the terms of information building itself so it could be that community hub that we've not got, but it could also be a business centre, couldn't it? It could be that entrepreneurial space for commerce and for the local businesses to meet and to strategize and see how we can work together more collaboratively um there's strength in that and again yeah it could yeah, be used to the, the, the community's advantage and in many ways it would be sympathetic to the area versus the anything that the proposed development would do can i just ask just to clarify because i don't know i think maybe be daft here but when we're talking about shareholding caveat and community shares, can you just clarify shareholding of what? So it would be shares that we would all be benefiting from. And so from what I've been told, you might get a small dividend back. This isn't going like on the stock market by any means. It's we're all buying in because we believe in a common cause mm -hmm. and we're, a share would be set at a nominal fee um, for the local community. We could make it a commercial kind of not commercial but we could make it a higher price for those that are maybe in america expat type community but for the locals it would be a nominal fee um and that, again the difference between that and the scale is that everyone would have equal voting rights um the other thing that has been highlighted about the bencom which i thought was quite nice is that because you are investing and I agree with Jim, and there's money involved that can't get murky, but if we keep it nominal and, and we keep the code, of conduct and constitution as tight as possible and ensure that our trustees 
that are on the board are, are vetted and integrity driven and whatnot, it could be run to the community's advantage. But look, come in, are you going to say something to that then? I think, I think one of the other things is, you know, I mean, I don't know, there's 70 or 80 people here, I mean, it would be simple for everybody to in here to sign a form and become a member of the community oh, development yeah. trust. Yeah. And you're able to fix the fee, so the fee could be nothing, but it could be 10 pence. And from this number, you could elect 15 people to become trustees. You only need nine. But we tend to find that people can make some means, so we've got that flexibility with 15, you can make a, make a quorum of the month. Yeah. So that, that, that's kind of nuts and bolts are one of the things I think you should think about tonight. Yeah, I, I agree. And from, I mean, the, the majority would need to be from Bank and Harden, and then we could be looking at co-opted members um, and appointments, like specialists, Persons that come with specialist skills from other regions. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, the tourist uh, information place is the car park behind it included? Yeah, that would be gone. So that would be gone. That, that would be gone. The parking lot right, facility. So you'd would be, be trying to take that along with the with the information centre as well. So we would take that with the information right. centre, and we would just take that. Because we need a parking ride. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. um, it's, it's crazy that that parking ride is gone, and that's, that forms not just our part, part of our objection, but part of Kilmaranock uh, Community Council's objection, um, and others as well, I'm sure. Because, I mean, if you've not got a car that's a certain age, you can't get into Glasgow. So, where are you meant to park your car to get into Glasgow? So, um, yeah, yeah, that's a, it's, yeah, we definitely keep that. Shooting. It's not just the cars that are parking to get on the train, you've got your camper vans and that's, yeah, so that's trade for the local economy again because, I mean, I, we met a camper van family last Friday and we were in having a meeting and they said we come here every year, where would we go? Um, but equally, Sally Page from your Balk Castle Country Park Regeneration Group um, was highlighting that she's working with LLTNP in terms of how the camper vans are getting rid of their um, their wastewater and things. So there's there's basic stuff like that that's not even happening at the moment that we would obviously need to look at with. You can get rid of your waste up at uh, Duncan Hills slightly. Oh, can you? You can park overnight in that camper. <coughs> well, I've got motor home, so yeah. Is yeah. that, does it just there, go to the water? showers, or? toilets, and uh, your grey water and your, your mm -hmm. Elson. Does it get into the lock? Yeah, the National Parks. Yeah, the old guys are out with their toilets, they bring them back to Duncan Mills to yeah. go because they've got a special disposable for it. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Sorry, you're missing a trick because that is an income, potential income on this piece of ground. That's why we're having this conversation. That's where business planning comes in. So these are all big ideas. Yeah, you could go to Campra. Yeah. You could go to Campra. Campra. It, it's camper. a campaign for uh, real beers, A I R E beers, and that's what you get in Europe. We don't have them here in the UK. And they get a license to have five to ten. Yeah. Yeah. Campra to come and do your inspection. Motor homes and Campra to set it up. And then there's a, a generation from that. I think the Duncan Mills is still slipping on the tank, isn't it? Because when I worked at National Parks, if anyone's here that's in the National Park, it used to be Oran that did the, 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 the tank emptying at Malaki Bay and Balmahan mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. and I think the Duncan Mill sits on a tank as well. Uh, so I think it's a tank that's emptied there. Mm -hmm. I don't need to use it because I wasn't going to go. So, because of your obvious and like you've been grossed in the whole campaign before, and I mean, is there other ideas that we've just spoke about that you think are worth mentioning? I think, yeah. I think there's, so I think there's lots of ideas. We had a meeting the last time, and just from the main ideas that went through sort of 20 minutes ago, there are lots of ideas. Campra is one I never thought of. Oh. Even though I've got a camper van, it hadn't kind of crossed my mind that camper is a way of bringing in generation. So, you, so you're generating money because they're coming in, they're camping overnight, and they're paying for fresh water and uh, the waste. 
sometimes I don't even need all of that. The fresh water, I mean, I, I was away and I came back today and I was in a car park of a visitor centre. They allow you to overnight. There's no facilities other than clean water. Mm -hmm. At the moment, they don't charge, but you could actually charge ten pound a night per van. Ten pound a night, and that's for a van. Mm -hmm. And the thing about that's just for clean water yes. and a safe. And the thing safe. about the camper van community, as everyone knows, that they struggle to find places because campsites tend to close down around the October time zone. <coughs> so between October and March, you've still got a lot of people coming to Scotland mm -hmm. in their camper vans, but mm -hmm. they don't have those facilities. So, yeah. so yeah. that would be yeah, 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 there's yeah that. Yeah. There's a gap there, yeah. but generally... Yeah. Do that at the Falkirk Wheel, aren't there? Yeah, Falkirk Wheel. Yes, I think there will be a £5 a night. The other place is... No, it's £12 a night. But there's toilets. Yeah, yeah. And it's gated. Yeah. So it's really secure. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm just looking around to see how many places are out in this. I don't know any of you. Who are you? I'm not telling you. <laughs> um... The point then about camper vans, I think a distinction has to be made between camper vans and motorhomes. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. Motorhomes tend to be self-contained, they tend to be absolutely massive, but still can bring, they can still bring trade to the local economy, but a lot of them are very big. Camper vans tend to be smaller, like Volkswagens and maybe adapted vans, and they tend to be more reliant on facilities that can be provided locally wherever they go. And I, I can assure I'm that's the case. Well, that's okay, you can disagree if you like. Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm Facebook groups where there's 30,000 members. Yeah, and there's, there's a camper van and, and there's a motorhome. If I can finish what I'm saying, sure. they go and they ask for places and they don't need facilities because they've already got their porta potty, they've got their water. That's what I'm saying. No, you're not. You're saying that they don't have these facilities. No, wait a minute. You didn't hear us. I'm not getting involved in an argument. Motorhomes tend to be more self contained, yeah. camper vans tend to be smaller. There's a big distinction. And a friend of mine's got a B and B up in uh, Sir Pepper, up in the uh, North Coast Two. Uh, what do you call it? Five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a motorbike race, right? The North Coast Five Hundred, and they've been plagued by motorhome, big, big things that occupy all the roads, and they can't get. You know, I mean, you can read about it. It's, it's all there, you know. But I mean, I've, I've, I've had camper vans. I've never had a motorhome because if you have a motorhome, you don't need a house, right? <laughs> I'm talking about a big one. So that's the point I'm making, right? The point is, camper vans are important. Yeah, need, need, need camper and motorhomes are not too big, you know. Depends. Yes, please come in. The, the one that's at um, uh, Loch Catherine, there's one at Loch Catherine as well. I think they only take 10. Yeah, that's what you would do. So it doesn't matter if it's motorhome, yes. camper van, they've got that area. If I had a motorhome and you're not taking up, North Coast 500 is entirely different. Oh, that's a whole different goal. But if you look at yeah. Europe the way they do it, it's brilliant. I mean, we can do that here. The more facilities, that's going to cost the more money to run. Yes. Yes. If you only want an overnight parking bay mm -hmm. and where they can empty their else on, what's that going to cost? Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing you're looking at rather than making a big enterprise because that's what I've tried to stop. Yeah, yeah. You just, I, would, mm -hmm. I mean, you would just limit, like you say, you yes. just limit the number of bays like yeah. most of these places do. Mm -hmm. um, Fenton's a perfect example. There's a barrier on you get that's a code, right. you go online, you book in, you get mm -hmm. your code and when you arrive there, you put the code in the barrier, it lifts and then you go. So that way you're controlling who's coming and going. Yeah, and that's £17 a night. Okay. And it's public toilets outside the gated area. I would love to argue that you can stay in a pub mm -hmm. one for free, but you need to... Yes, so I already have my eye on a few people that I know who came in, but I don't know who else, because there's got to be more people around the table today that would want and have the experience of being able to get involved in the business planning process. So again, Diria has got sheets across there and we want to go put your name down um, if you have to get involved in that part of the process. Um, Going back to the legal status, we, we do need to make a decision on that. I think, and again, this is on the advice of DCAS, that we, we go and we do the company limited by guarantee to get it set up. So we've got that, we've got the name down, and that can be done in half an hour on company's house. 
or via a third party website. Um, so we'll do that. Nonetheless, I think if everyone is in agreement with that, I think it's good advice from PTAS. It, it means we can get the ball rolling. But do we want, and we could take that and then just change that into charitable staff as if we wanted, couldn't we, Jim? I think the important thing is, I mean, I find this very interesting because there's been some great ideas coming up. But we need to rewind the tape a bit. Yeah, yeah. We need to set the process up in the system yeah. to begin yeah. to talk about the ideas and evaluate them. Mm -hmm. And the way we need to do that is for everybody in here to sign a bit of paper saying they want to become a member. No cost. Mm -hmm. And pick 15 people. <coughs> I like 15 people to sit on the board mm -hmm. and then, you know, this isn't a manageable amount of people mm -hmm. to, say, to, say, to start <coughs> discussing details about that, that isn't it? <coughs> but it's great to see everybody here. Uh, and I think then you get into the details yeah. and you get the trustees on the table. All these ideas and suggestions that are really, really good can feed into that process. And then you're talking about the 600, that's to get the money for the uh, land for it, you know. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I think you need to set a process up in a system to get to where you want to go in the short term. Yeah, we need those who are wanting to be part, part of that um, business planning process, put your name down. It doesn't matter if you don't, if you want to flyer, put your name down. If you want to come and do the table talk, Victorian, I know you do, you're mm -hmm. happy to do that. I'm happy to do that. Like. Whatever you're happy to do, put your name down. Adults, there's three options. You can help flyers, speak to people, do table talk, um, set ups and balance for other areas where passerbys. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and you'd be stopping them. You'd be stopping them and talking to them and telling them. And we would help with a script for you. So if you weren't confident yeah. about what you were saying, we could write a script out for you so you would know what to say. Um, and then we need um, those ones that are going to help with the business planning and then some round this table, I've not got a table, I keep saying table, but that imaginary table <laughs> um, that want to think about being a trustee, put your name down, there will be an election process that's attached to that. But again, we're getting away ahead, aren't we? Because mm -hmm. we need to get that business planning process as well and, and, and that Scottish land fund application. So, I mean, we, we need to follow a, a process and we're discussing everything that needs to happen. Um, we need to go from stage one yeah. to stage two. Sorted, and then when that's sorted, we move yeah. to, to stage two. two. Let's not jump ahead. Walk so that, before you run. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, sorry, it, sorry it, for, for me to mention this earlier, I think you touched on it. We need the law on talking about 15 trustees. You can still appoint <laughs> advisors and people with special business interests yeah. without you know, going to elections and that. Yeah. So that, that 15 can become 20. If you've got people who have got a specific input to what you're trying to achieve, you know. Yeah. And it wouldn't be Balfour Balfour and Hadden Community Council is a statutory body will run with stage one and it'll be stage two that the Community Development Trust that's set up will run with. That's important to know. Um, and as Jim said, we can appoint specialist advisors and whoever we need to come in. And because of, I mean, this campaign itself has got a huge interest from all over, not just Scotland, the UK, but the world. There's people signing the objections and signing our community development trust form from New Zealand and Australia. And um, so, nonetheless, um, we need the people to be local ish. <laughs> That are forming the trust, so not just Balfour and Hadden, however. So, um, I mean, in terms of mm -hmm. Flynn, so can I confirm that the two most important things to come out of tonight yeah. are that you need to reach that threshold yeah. mm -hmm. of six hundred. Yeah. Well, you need to say some local per and Balfour, absolutely and minimum. And the second thing, aside from all the signing of you, whether you wanted to leave it or not. And the second thing is we need boots on the ground to achieve that 600, yeah. so that's the two important things. Well, there's that, there's, I mean, there's that, and then we need uh, we need um, the whole funding thing is important as well. We've not got that funding thing going on in the background. We need that backup there because if the Scottish Land Fund will look at what we're doing as a community, and if 
they don't see the community looking at fundraising activity, they're not going to take it seriously. Um, and I've been told that. So that is so important, that GoFundMe page, the Doghouse event, it's so important. Um, so when we're sharing things, they're kept up and they're not being taken down because that's been happening. Um, that we speak to our neighbours, talk to our, our friends at the bus stop, and tell people about what we're doing. It's, 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 it's just very important that we share and we network about what we're doing and trying to raise as much awareness as we possibly can. <coughs> if I could ask a question, would it, the, any of the local papers, because I think people can buy local paper, and do we maybe give you a call to put in the paper? I don't think I've got time to write a call with you. <laughs> this is another thing that if, I mean, see if somebody's got marketing experience in here, I come from a marketing PR background, so I've not, I've, I've got a full-time job, um, so it's not a completely different sector from now altogether, but this is, a, if you've got a level of expertise in, a, in a, a, a special area, come and let us know, because I know Dave has, and he's going to lend his expertise to the campaign, so if you've got something, I mean, it's, you might not think it's special, so come and tell us what you can do, what your background and experience is, and it could well be that it's something we really need help with, because um, at the moment there is just a very small group of us, and um, we're, we're doing an awful lot, of what are we? we're trying, and then again, with your, your support coming on board, that's, that's going to change, obviously, because you're going to help us. So, the GoFundMe, and the, what you've said there, the pertinent points, salient the pertinent points, would be nice, is, is, nice thing, is that they need the boots on the ground, those volunteers flying, speaking to people, get the 600 from Balf and Halden, and promote the GoFundMe going forward. Well, that's what we need to get started tonight, definitely. I mean, I would, I would really want to vote on the legal formation tonight, but I don't know whether we're at that stage. I think people are a little bit. I think they need to understand it better than to actually look at it. You might have to have a second meeting as well. Yeah, I think so. What we'll do, Jim, are you in agreement with that? That we have a second meeting to vote on the, the legal status? Because I think it's maybe just too much for tonight. That yeah. I don't know how people feel, but I mean, the, the three quite simple options there, and I think you've explained the deal. I really think it's important to try to move forward as quickly as possible. I mean, once things are sure, I'm going, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go for your company limited by guarantee, regardless. We're going to get that done, we'll get that company's house set up. But from DTAS, again, um, her advice was do that. And then you can decide if you want another, if you want the bank from or you want the steel. So, so why don't we just do that then? We don't bother with the bank. No, no, why don't you concentrate on what you need to be concentrating on the now, set up the limited company and then revisit that at a later date yeah, yeah. when you're in a more secure situation and you've, you've established the funding, you've flyered, you've got gained momentum, you have people signed up. You know, I think there you make key things, then you revisit this mm -hmm. at a later date. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I've run a scale charity for 14 years mm -hmm. for the Cove and Kilcreggan Youth Cafe. Okay. It's very simple, but I think it was possibly be too simple for what you're doing and the amount of money that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Because obviously I was working from a shed in the park and just having kids come in and paying a youth worker. Mm -hmm. And it was all very simple. And it's worked brilliantly for 14 years without any glitches or anything. Um, so I can guarantee that that is a very easy one to, to use. But for what you're needing, I think it's maybe not robust enough. Yeah. I hear you, I think we're the Nordic example is that Meg spoke about it at the last meeting with that Bencom, mm. it would complement because of the footfall that we have in mm. Bali, we've got a million people going You're going to, to be Bali. dealing with a lot of money yeah. and you're going to be dealing with a lot of other people involved, whereas I was very much like, 
a lone wolf just dealing with all of that stuff for the youth cafe and then my youth worker would do all the stuff with the kids so it was um, very straightforward but yeah i think it, i think possibly you need something a, a little bit more robust than a skill for okay. yeah I am being to defend from status, but it, is, it needs to be a group decision. It really needs to be all decided. But I think what you've said is, I think the way forward is that we um, reconvene in a smaller meeting, or a, whoever wants to come, you can all come if you want to, but I think we reconvene, we'll go for the company on to big MT to get the ball rolling in the first instance. So there's only so much that I'm going to be able to relay other than what's been relayed tonight. So I think, I mean, going back to Jim's point that... Um, that will mean the one you're to use that page, don't it? Yeah, I need one of the problems is the decision's going to be made next month. Yeah, I know. By the party. Next month, we've got a decision now to actually have a show of hands. Yeah, yeah, how about that? We may not want to call it a problem. And then what you can do is keep it back and we'll get it out to email via everyone. I think that's probably the simplest way um, of doing it. So, um, back to the boat now again a second ago. Well, how we missed the beginning of the meeting, I just want to know what is the sort of time scale we're working towards to get this Well, we need to get this up and running straight away. This is why we're going to go to the top and then we'll be guarantee straight away, just off the bat, and then we can come back around the table and decide whether we want to ski or a bang home or we can translate the company limited by guarantee into a um, type of status. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the time thing is with a skill, it takes up to three months. So we don't really have time for a skill, actually. That's another pertinent point. Now, that no, but for Mingo Land, I mean, how immediate are they wanting to try well, the, uh, the such decision, development? The decision date is the 16th of September, but we know that. That's only about six weeks away. Yeah, we know that LLTNP will have made the decision before then, Jim, won't they have? Yes. So, I mean, there's a good chance that. Mm -hmm. This might be a bullet point, it's not relevant. Oh, it's relevant. I think that uh, a development like Flamingo Land and Balloch would be appalling. I'll tell you why. Because effectively, Balloch is a cul de sac. If you think about it. And I feel personally, this is my own observation, I feel a, a development like Flamingo Land should be established round right about maybe Hart Hill and the MA Motorway. But there's plenty of room. No, I'm not joking. There's plenty of room to develop out there. There's good transport communications. It's halfway between. Edinburgh and Glasgow, and they could do with the light up to a point. Yes. I'm sure the people in Shorts and Hart Hill and Black Ridge and Runabout, you know, well, they may welcome it, but at least it's more space for them to do that. That's what I'm saying.
but it would be sympathetic to the local area. We still want that walkway there. We want to still have the, the boats get access to their moorings. Um, we don't want to take away the trees. We don't want to uh, uh, interrupt the habitat for the animals, do we? But this is again where the trust would be deciding what goes on. It's not going to be me. It's not going to be you. It's going to be everybody that's making up that decision. So yeah, I mean that's the whole basis that we need to be able to trust. Well, it's never. I mean, I. But, I mean, even really, I, I come from that uh, side. It's not the government, so. I know, mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah. I mean, we've been in meetings before now mm -hmm. together. And, uh, look, yeah, of course, look, yeah. I mean, there's. You know, for my passion, I, 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 I've not always been 100 percent just that about what we're doing and what we're trying to do. Um, so, does that make sense in terms of what we're going to get done and what we're going to do next? I think really needs to happen if, if you're willing to get involved and have to help, please make sure your name is down. Do you? I know you've already given your name already, but just go do it again. Just go put it up there again. Even yeah. 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 don't change your name. No. Um, people that you might know, speaking to people that are in your network, like going to sort of Arnold Clark's life and having a bit of a car would be a great idea. But we know that people that know other people. Um, so utilising the network to raise profile would be very much appreciated. Follow us on our Facebook page, the Balkan Health and TC Notice Board. Please share posts. This will be going on to YouTube. Um, so sharing this um, and help drive traction and yeah, like, let's just try and help build that momentum. We don't have a great deal of time. That 16th of September is a really key date. So we want as many people outside the White Church in Balk. What's the time that you get the most time? God, I'm not going to know. I don't think there's a time yet. Yeah, there's a time set, but there's not been. There's not, but there is a range that's been made with the Greens to do a bit of action before it through the floor homing. Two five minute slots, which is not at all diplomatic, well, it's not democratically correct because when we look at other like planning applications, they've been given a lot longer. So, Alana and Jim, you can speak on that, can't you? That's yeah, cer certainly, um, certainly, it, um, certainly for the Save Lock Loan campaign, which we did, um, and it, its hearing was a Zoom hearing for the Gang Group Council happened uh, during lockdown. It was a seven and a half hour session and we had quite a few speakers. We were also we also pushed our guy on butte and um, to allow us to make an additional presentation on behalf of the community to say important people and that was a three minute long film. We had some um, film producers come down and make a film of the local area and it was actually interviewing the local residents in their village and asking them what they thought of the prospective development. We, we won that case and we put an end to the development, but not only did we put an end to the development, we forced a legal change on the local development plan, which meant the land is now protected, so there will be no coming back for that developer. So it's now sitting on a, a tranche of land that he bought that he can't do anything with. Um, and, that, and that was particularly because the land was um, Atlantic rainforest, which is rarer. Um, than the Amazon rainforest, so that's how we post them out. Um, the film was very successful. Um, was that, that Pelamola? That was Pelamola, oh. yes. Um, he has a land at Carrick Castle, which is opposite Port and Cable, which was all the, the point of it. But the, the film was very, very popular with the councillors. When we surveyed the councillors afterwards to ask why unanimously they turned down the planning application, they all said the same thing. 
the very emotive three minute film had convinced them that this was going to be horrific for the locals and the locals just would not be able to cope with it. So we're kind of thinking along those lines at the moment, do we get the same filmmakers back and try and do mm -hmm. a, a film for Loch Lomond? Um, the other one was the um, fish farm, after Clyde as it was known, AFF Clyde. Mm -hmm. After Clyde was the other one that we did. It was, it was also successful to prevent them from putting the fish farm on Loch Law at the top in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is done with PR um, and a lot of it is done with word of mouth. So social media is one of your biggest hits. All of these campaigns have a running theme through them and that is the Greens. Regardless of your political persuasion in this room, the Greens threw their weight behind Port Cable, threw their weight behind the Loch Long campaign, the Fish Farm campaign. So they kind of like spearheaded a lot of it and that's where the benefit was because we were a small campaign. We didn't have the social media reach that the Greens had, we didn't have a database that the Greens had. So we didn't have the access to the greater wider public. Um, so there are a few people in this room tonight who I know have a lot of media contacts, and particularly in the film and programming industry. <laughs> I'm looking at one lady in particular, and I think that helps. So at the moment, we do still have support from three media names that I can think of. Cameron McNeish, the Hillwalkers, who's been in the campaign. Eddie Reader. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. And we also have the actor from Braveheart, Angus McFadden. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. So I'm looking at Susie Wills now and saying, <laughs> Susie, can we bring some more names on board that would give yeah. us a bit more PR? I'm sure. I mean, I was talking to Elaine C. Smith the other day oh. and Greg Fisher. So they're both the rounds at the moment. Yes, yes, I wanted to say, I just said it. Gregor Fisher, is a good idea. Say again. Yeah, go for Gregor Fisher. Yeah, well, both of them. I mean, oh, they're friends. Probably Tony Roper. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get Tony Roper involved as well. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. 